Allah ordered Ibrahim to leave, to come back. Now, he is being torn up between his wife and his child and between God's commandment. And we know something about Ibrahim. Ibrahim, Allah says about Ibrahim, قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لا شريك له وبذلك أمرت وأنا أول المسلمين I am the first to submit to Allah Ibrahim had such an iron will that he always, always submitted to God even when Allah told him later on to kill his own son he never says no to Allah whatever God tells him he would do Allah asked him to leave and he was about to leave his wife Hagar went to him begging him not to leave. But he had to leave. قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي أَسْكَنْتُ مِنْ ذُرِّيَّةِ بِوَعْدٍ غَيْرِ ذِزَرٍ My Lord, I'm leaving my wife, my child in this plantless desert. قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي أَسْكَنْتُ مِنْ ذُرِّيَّةِ بِوَعْدٍ غَيْرِ ذِزَرٍ In this valley that has no tree. No human being, nothing. And the Baytikal Muharram, next to your house, next to your holy land. Then Allah, he makes an appeal to Allah. فَاجْعَلْ أَفْئِدَةً مِنَ النَّاسِ تَهْوِي إِلَيْهِمْ Make certain hearts be drawn to them. Make certain hearts love them. That's all he did. He left his family with a piece of dua. That's it. He left them in the hand of Allah. It was difficult for him to turn back. But Jibreel was pushing him. Ibrahim, you have to go back. You have a mission to finish. Leave them here. He says to Jibreel, How do I leave my wife and my child in this desert? Jibreel says to him, Leave them in the hands of the one who is more passionate and more merciful and more compassionate than you. Who do you think you are? What can you do to your family? Allah can take better care of them than you. Trust Allah. Just leave them. He left while his wife was weeping and his child was crying. He left and in a few hours, they run out of water. There is no water. And the child started to cry, crying, crying. What can a mother in that desert do for her child when there is no water in that desert? But she was a very strong woman. She believed in Allah and she believed that Allah will not let them down. And she believed in her husband's mission. She never objected. So, upon her husband's departure, she stayed next to her baby, fearing beasts, animals, thieves. Anything can happen in the heart of that desert. On top of that, there is no water. The child started crying, and she doesn't know what to do. She she started crying with her baby. He cries, she cries. She cannot get him water. Now the child is crying and crying and all of a sudden she notices that there is water there. A half a mile or one mile there. So she runs after that water. It seems that she was not familiar with the desert terrain. If you happen to travel in the desert, I have seen that. When there is sand. In the U.S. there is no sand. It's soil. If you travel in the desert with sand, the sun reflects its light on the sand. For you who are traveling in the desert, the reflection of sun's light looks like water. It's not water. It is Mirage. It's mirage. 
So if someone is not so familiar with the desert terrain, and she was not, apparently, she thought that's water. So she went after water. But it was not water. It was mirage. When she realized it's not water, she heard the baby crying. She came running back to the baby. The, the baby kept crying. Again, when she looks back, she sees water. She did not get it yet. She went after water again. For her, for her disappointment, it was not water. It was mirage. She comes back to her baby. Because the baby was crying and she could not leave him. So between the water that she was chasing and her baby, she was going back and forth for seven times. Till she hears the baby not crying anymore. She came back and all of a sudden she found something so amazing happening beneath the feet of her baby. There is water coming from earth. And she made a circle around the water with sand. And when that hole or circle was filled with water, she took some water, drinking, and she gave to her baby. And the baby stopped crying. And she talked to the water for not overflowing. She said, Zem, Zem, meaning stop from flowing. And that was Zamzam, the well of Zamzam. Now, whenever there is water, there are birds. So if you see birds flying somewhere, you need to know that this is a sign that there is water here. Because birds look for water. Birds started flocking the area. Now travelers in the desert noticing the uh, birds flying around, they realize there is water. And to tell a traveler in the desert that there is water here, it is like telling someone in Dearborn that you won the lottery of $3 million, inshallah. So travelers were so happy to finally find water. They came. They came. The first tribe that came was a tribe known as Jurham. They came seeking water. She was brave. She was a smart. She played her card well. She told them, I'm not going to give you a drop of water unless you offer me protection. You give me protection, I give you water. And they agreed. And they settled around Mecca. And that was the very first urban settlement in Mecca. A few years later, Ismail becomes a teenager or an adult, 15, 16, 17, his father was coming back and forth. He would stay a few months in Palestine and a few months in Mecca. So when he was 18, when he was 18, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him to sacrifice his son, Ismail. Now, the Jews say it is Isaac. Our Imams, alayhum salam the Quran does not specify whether it is Isaac or Ishmael, but our Imams, alayhum salam say it is Ismail. Whether it is Ismail or Isaac, it doesn't really matter, but from the, uh, from the, from the historical context, we can tell it was Ismail because Isaac never came to Mecca. Ishmael who was in Mecca. The father takes the son out as they are walking a little bit far away from their home. Ibrahim tells his son that my son, I saw a dream and my dream is not like any dream. If you see a dream, if I see a dream, it could be nonsense. It could be because we have overeaten last night 
or because we are so stressed out, or because we are so jubilant, or we are so excited. Our emotional status reflects on our dreams. That's why I tell my brothers and sisters who see dreams, some of them come to me, uh, had panicked already, or panicking because of a dream. I tell them, don't panic. Most of your dreams are nonsense. So don't panic if you, every time you see a bad dream. So, but for the Prophet, anytime he sees a dream, it is a sign, it's an order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's how the wahi, revelation works with the Prophet. When Allah reveals to the Prophet, reveals through wahi. Allah reveals to Ibrahim to sacrifice his son. Again, Ibrahim, knowing Ibrahim, you would tell he will not say no to Allah at all. He submits to Allah's will. You know how difficult it is for a father to be asked to sacrifice his own son? It's very difficult. There is nothing more precious to the father or to the mother than their own children. Allah is ordering a father to sacrifice his own fruit, the fruit of his heart. Believe me, it could have been easier for Ibrahim or often for some parents if Allah had asked them to sacrifice yourself than their own children. <laughs> but Ibrahim was someone who would not say to Allah, he would submit himself to Allah. Allah tested him and he came so successful, A plus.